it has the Morphtronics, it has the it has some support, it has the Power Tool Dragon, it basically has all the um cards that are really good for the deck. Um like I think probably some of the best Morphtronics are that one that uh self on because it can because it, it's it allows you it it can special summon you a bunch if you roll really high. Um and even if you can just special summon one from the deck, I mean special summoning from the deck, so and it doesn't negate the attack, so I mean negate the effect either. So like even if you can only get one, that can still be really good. Another notable Morphtron card is definitely the Scopin, since um you since uh, again it's another one that special summons another, and since it's a tuner, um you can set up some really good um um synchro plays like power toll if you special summon level four, or like maybe even like level six or level five plays if you special summon something a little bit lower. And also the one the 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 thing that special summons doesn't have its effects negated. So once again, um, you also get to choose the position when you're special summoning. So that can set up some pretty cool extender plays. Um, I guess slinging can be kind of cool, but like I'm not sure if you really play it. Like maybe just one since it has that destruction ability. And and yeah, and then of course pa um power tool dragon. And then there's a new power tool dragon as well. Um, that's kind of cool. Get you you get to s draw a card every time an equipped card is equipped to it. So that can be really cool. Of course, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have that really good equipped card. The C and D, I believe it is called. Oh no, there it is. Double tool C and D. This is probably one of the best um one of the best equip cards for the Morphtronics. But unfortunately you can't actually equip it to the power tool mecha dragon. It has to be the original. And this is doesn't treat its name as power tool dragon while on the field, so that's a little unfortunate. Still probably is a pretty good card though. Anyway, so there's that. Um then the next secret pack. Oh, so this is one way you can get the Alter Geist. So I remember you could get the Alter at least a few of the better Alter Geist from one of those um regular packs back in the day, selection packs. But this is also a place where you can get live twins as well and a few other Cybus monsters. Of course, um, one time Pasco isn't that bad since it simply special summons a token. So that can be used for some cool plays. And it's, I mean, it's generic too, so you might, so maybe like you could even, you can't actually use it for exceed plays though, because you can't use tokens for exceed plays. But hey, I mean, um, you can use it for link plays, but. Not not a lot of people really use it. Personal spoofing a really good card for Alter guys. Of course, multi fakers is, uh, is like basically their must-have card. Conquery is also not bad either. Pixiel, um, probably not that great. Fifa now lag. I'm I don't think people play that one either. Manifestation though is a really good card for the deck. Some people might. I don't know if you would really play Amulet Elf though. And I don't know much about the Evil Twins, so you can always like look that up if you're interested. But I know they have a pretty cool play where like um Kisiko and Lila can be really annoying because they can can keep um because they have really nice synergies off of each other. They can be really annoying to deal with, so there's that. And then I think these two also are really good as well. Because this one special summons from the deck. And this one um, allows you to search for live twins. And 
and then miraculous event i think i looked at this already yeah because this was the one with the uh, um ruin and ruin angel of oblivion and the uh, demise or what, ha, what, whatever the names are. And this is also the card we get, the Diviner of the Herald, which is a really good card for Drytrons. Also, you don't really... I I think it's Herald of Ultimateness that you pl can play in the deck, but I think most people opt to play the um, lower level one. But it doesn't really matter. Oh, they're also both in the same set. It doesn't really matter which one you play, though, because... I mean, they both are able to be, um, um, you can go into either one of them using the Drytron, um, um, ritual spell because, um, they, they both have less attack than the Drytrons, than those level one Drytron guys. And then Herald of Light, really good for the deck as well. Like you're gonna be saying it straight to the graveyard so that you can search for like a ritual spell I think it also can search for a ritual monster. So yeah, a really caught good card there And then also have the megalith the advanced ritual lot Which is really good for those normal base ritual decks or maybe like um, If you're willing to play normal monsters in your deck if you really want to ritual summon something I mean, being able to use material from the deck is always really nice. Um, and then preparation of rights is also really good. Just being able to act as a double search. This also acts as a double search, so both of them really nice when you can use them. And then a few more megaliths, like those last three are all really good for the deck. Monja 10,000 hands. I mean, maybe you use that, but like it's only for specific ritual decks. A lot of ritual decks have like better ways of being able to search your stuff. And then Herald of Orange Light, definitely a really good card for that Drytron deck too. And then some some decks like to use the incantations. Actually, a lot of ritual decks that aren't specifically Drytrons probably would love to use the incantations. So it's so as long as you're not you're playing a ritual deck that's not Drytron, it can be really good for that. And even if you don't, even if you're not sure if you're playing Drytrons, you, you're you probably going to be able to pick these up anyway and then maybe like just hold on to them for in case you do ever want to play um, a different ritual deck. Because chances are you're going to be needing the incantations. Um, and then Dawn the Vault is not played in the Herald deck. Um, a few more incantations. I'm not sure if those two get played as much as the the first two, but still can be pretty good. And then I think incantation inception is also a really good ritual card as well. So maybe like like look at that, like and maybe see if you want to like if you want to play it like. Um, you can always, like, look at the cards in your deck editor without actually, like, owning them. Um. Like, there's, like, a filter that allows you to do that. And if you're not sure how to do that, I'm sure that you can, like, find that online. How to use the deck editor. I think I figure out everything on my own. So, it's not too terribly hard to figure out but yeah I can see if like some people are getting a little bit confused so here's the next one this one is called I think I may miss a name but you can always pause if you need to get the name and I'll also like mention the chapters too so if I forget the name and it, it should be fine this one actually has less than like a few of the others this one is 31 um so yeah th so, so sometimes it's it's easier to get um, like specific URs and SRs and some of them than others but I think they do they do it on purpose where like usually the the ones that have better URs and SRs are gonna have more um, display cards to them so it's hard to get those really good URs and SRs oh also um so scrap so this one looks like a heavy scrap um support pack 
so that's really good. Also, the Scrap Raptor, a really good card for dinosaurs in general. So, um, and also, cool thing is, Scrap Guard searches for the Scrap Raptor, so you might just want to pick up three of both of these for the dinosaur deck because he is a really good card for um the dinosaur deck so i would say even if like scrap guard can only search for scrap after it's still really worth it but really not w not worth playing anything else besides that um and you don't and it's not like you have to it just basically makes it so that you basically have six of the scrap raptor if you think about it Kind of like how, like, um, terraforming searches for the field spell. Um, it basically gives you extra copies of that field spell in a way. And and it's a little bit better than playing, like, extra copies of the field spell in some cases. Because it helps filter out your deck also. Um, Crossbeat, really good card for Metaphys. And I know that because I used to play Metaphys. And this was a pretty hype card when it came out for that deck. I think it is used in Metaphys. Um, you could probably just use three of this card, or at least two. Um, scrap Recycler. Um, also, Scrap Recycler isn't too bad in um, the that that Cyber Doc deck. Yeah, I couldn't think of the name. Um, first off. But yeah, scrap because um, like because that main um cyberdark monster wants um actual like machines in the graveyard so they can so they can like equip them to them, equip those to them. Anyway, scrap factory a really uh pretty much a new card for any scrap deck. Um. Outside of scrap, so not really that great. It's like really, it's really specific to the archetype. Scrap shark, one of the best um scrap, scrap archetype cards, just because of its high attack. Also, this one's pretty good for the deck too, since um, since you can like just basically normal summon it in order to get immediate advantage. But outside of scraps, it's not really that great because, like, a card that like just destroys itself. There's better two thousand attackers that you can that you can use if you really want a two thousand attack monster. Um, and then this one seems pretty good since it's special summons. Also, this one. Um, actually, the they have to. Oh, use special summon to either the player's side of the field. So yeah, it's pretty good. Seems good enough. And then Scrap Rage is probably also pretty good too. Just I'm not sure though. Maybe not. It's it's good in Dol. I think I'm, is it good in Dol Links? I'm not sure. It's probably better in Dol Links simply because um Bow is a lot more important in that game. Okay, here's the next one. It's Forgotten City Dwellers. So this one seems to be big on Mermails and big on um, on Atlanteans as well, it looked like. So Abyss Dweller is a really good card. Um, if, you're playing, if you're planning on going into rank 4s, you probably want to play this card. Especially if you're playing like a rank 4 water deck. It's a really good card. Just in general, though, Poseidra. I remember I I played a Poseidra deck. I bought a Poseidra deck, but then I got, but then I think I either lost it or I traded the cause off or something. It was kind of cool, though. I remember I bought a few decks back in the day, but I don't really buy decks nowadays. Um, I I'm just talking about buying stuff. Um, whenever people are willing to sell stuff in my um, locals if they were cheap enough. I think I bought that deck for like 10 or 20 dollars. So it's not, it wasn't too expensive. And then I, th I also bought a Fire King, I think, for about the same amount. 
So yeah, they were pretty cheap though. It's not like I'm putting down like fifty dollars. Some people was were um selling decks for like fifty dollars, but I didn't want to buy any of those because that's way too high. Atlantean Moxman, also a really good card in Mermails. So I'm glad they're putting the Atlanteans in here too, because I realize that Atlanteans pair up very nicely in Mermails. Okay, and then there's a, another call. They're probably just playing it because it kind of fits in lore with the Poseidra. I guess the Poseidra. Yeah, Poseidra is basically a, of the Atlantean archetype too, but. I like to think. But it's still nice that they paired them up together so it's easier to get the Mermail deck together. Um. So yeah, this is a really neat, nice secret pack if you're building a Mermail deck because it also has those Atlanteans. I don't not I don't think as many people would be willing to play the Atlantean just pure. I think it's more of just a fun archetype than anything else. Um, yeah, there's a few good cards in here, and you can also definitely see which um, Atlanteans are the best by looking up or just. Um, looking up in the deck editor and using your best judgment if you're good at that. I know some people are good at just like being able to like tell like if this is a good card or not. Um, okay, so I remember how I unlocked this secret pack. I unlocked this secret pack by um by um getting hold of Cerberus. So now I have Cerberus Phoenix and Unicorn. So that's pretty nice. I have one copy of each. Um, okay, so besides those, though, X Crawler Qua Quailiarch is a really good card for crawlers. Um, since Mech Knight Spectrum Supreme is in here, my guess is that this might be the prize you get for um, going through the ending scenario of the Mech Knight um, gate I'm on. So that's pretty cool. Um, the Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Griffin, but if that's the case, I wonder if I should really be going through this. Oh, well, it's fine. Nightmare Griffin, not played as much, but it can be pretty handy for being able to, like, I believe it destroys back row. Well, no. Yeah, it destroys. Oh, no, it banishes spells. No, no, no. Um, it, it, it can, um... Reset spells and traps from your graveyard. So that's kind of cool, but like not really a lot of back row decks use it. Funnily enough, um, I guess it's just not good enough, cause you do have to discard a card in order to do that. So you do lose some, so you don't actually gain any advantage. You have to give up a card to reset one of your own cards. It's not as good as like getting rid of your opponent's stuff. Because at least then, like, you're down a card, but also your opponent is down a card. So not really any advantage, but, like, it's still good enough that, like, like, um, getting rid of your opponent's stuff is valued way higher, basically, than, like, resetting your own stuff. Um, and then, yeah, a few more of the Mech Knights. Indigo Eclipse is a really notable one. I'm not going to go through these too much, but I will like point out which ones are the notable ones and sometimes I'll explain if one really catches my eye. I just want to get through these so I can get to the loner deck hopefully. Okay. Oh yeah, it was I wanted to unlock this one to try for the metaverse, but I didn't get it the first time and I was kind of and then I was kind of um desperate and also I didn't have another thousand gems to throw at this at the time so I decided I'm just gonna craft it like I'm sure I have more than enough cards and it turns out I do so I was able to refresh my CP and that and and having yet another dual pass also really helps too so I of course bought the gold pass there so looks like this has both the Tendangles and the virtual world 
Of course, that metaverse is a really good card for getting field spell. Especially good in, um, I'm especially good in, um, also pseudo space is really good in, in Exodia decks because they use that chicken game. But I'm not sure if chicken game will ever be banned, so, um, just a warning there. But anyway, um, that metaverse is really good for mystic mind decks that's what it was because being able to activate mystic mind during the opponent's turn can be really good because of its lockdown ability and then of course in tendangles some you if you're wondering which ones are the best for those archetypes you can always again look them up in the deck editor or um look it up online for example decks And then, oh yeah, and of course this one I got a f I got a free pull here. Um. Since. Nah, I'm gonna. I'm. Mm, yeah, no, I might as well look at it. I'll I'll just go through it. So in front of Doom Dragon, Void Ogre Dragon, in front of Archfiend. Uh, oh yeah, I'm not gonna say it, but yeah, this one seems to be a really good pack if you're going for the Infernies. Also, a Lore of Darkness is is a really good card for any dark deck. Definitely want three of that. Insta Void is really good for Exodia decks. It also can be a pretty pretty good card for the um for the festival because um you you probably want a few extra draw cards than normal. Because, um, because, um, the Highlander. And so, if you don't mind the res the downside of getting rid of your entire hand at the end, if you can afford to play it, then maybe you should. Because it, it kind it's kind of like a worse, um, Upstart Goblin. Still be really good. It can help, um... Um, replace itself while not giving your opponent extra advantage so it's a little bit better than one day of peace or dark world dealings which are also no um also two other notable draw cards though i feel like maybe not a lot of people would agree but i think like even draw cards like that is it's worth playing for um this festival also if you're willing if you're okay with giving up your gnome summon but like you actually have to give up quite a bit more um than just your gnome summon you also have to give up your special summon it's card card d but it has a lot of restrictions to it so really um but it can be really good in the right deck i think more like control deck since you can still set stuff before um, before using it. So here, th some more Inferno cards. Phantom Hand, which is also a funny card. I'm not sure if that's as good, though. Okay. And then Life Force Control System is the next one. Okay. So this is where you're going to find a lot of the Infernoids. A few Clee Forts. Um. Wow, another place where you can find into the void. So that means there's two different secret packs that can get you into the void. I didn't even realize. That's crazy. But I guess the there are cards like that. There are cards like that where it's found in more than one secret pack. So yeah, that's another thing. Like, if you want to get as many free secret packs as you can, then maybe you should like look at the cards that are available in multiple secret packs, like that into the void. I mean, you still have to spend some CP, but it might be worth it for getting free pulls from multiple secret packs. Yeah. So basically, into the void is really worth um crafting though, um. 
because it like whether you need the infernoids I mean yeah infernies or whether you need the infernoids because it can because it gets you the other anyway and so maybe it can help you with the other archetype in case you ever want to go for um, one of those other ones later on so yeah that's really good it seems like a lot of the infernoids are pretty low ready though well actually no not exactly but still it does have the benefit of having an enter void which is also a which can also get you a free pull from another secret pack too which even if you don't need the other secret pack again it's it's more cards and then here's this one that contains the gods and the exodia the forbidden one um obelisk and then also yeah there's the gods um, Wing Dragon Ross Sphere Mode, a really good Kaiju like card if you're looking to get rid of more than one of your opponent's monsters. Um, Left Arm Offering, really good for if you really want to, um, if you're really trying to go for a really notable spell card. Um, it can also be really useful for the um, for the event since you can only play one of each card so if there's a really noble spell card in that deck and you can afford to bypass the weak the downsides of it it might be worth playing since it basically gets you an extra copy of um, one of your noble spells or ba basically any of your noble spells it can get you an extra copy of since you can search for any spell also, it's a really good card for Manifest, though, because um, the Banch is is really good. If you can Banch a few Manifest cards, that's really good. And then you can search for like a really good spell like um, Dimensional Fisher, um, or maybe Grass Looks Green if you're playing a 60 card variant of Manifest. Yeah. And then holding arms, holding legs can also be kind of good, but probably more nobly for um for the side deck if you're playing in tournaments. But like still, like holding legs is pretty good actually, because it, it it's kind of like another hey it's hey true nade that like returns all set spells and traps to the from the field to hand. Not too bad. And then here's the next one. Um, this is where you can find the Dark Worlds. And also Lilith. Um, Lilith a really good card if you really need another searcher for your normal traps. Hmm. And then Darkest Diablos. Gates of Dark World. Yeah, and of course, this is also where you find the, um, the darkest Diablo sock type, whatever that one's called. I'm not exactly sure what it's called. The Layer of Darkness deck. You can find the support, the cards for that. I guess it's not really a specific arc type, but like they all fit into that. And then Dark World Dealings, probably a really good card for the event as well. Again, it's another draw card, and you probably want as many draw cards as you can get to make your deck more consistent, especially since you can only run one of each card. Especially if you don't really have a lot of searchers. But I'm guessing the ones that actually have cards that can search for stuff are probably going to be really good decks for this event. Um just because you because again the Highlander um, decks okay a few more Dark World cards also apparently um the dangers are pretty good too 
um, since they can get you advantage pretty much for free. But I didn't want to go with the dangers. I'll show you my deck later on. So here, here's the last one. It's called Space Time Transcendence. This is where you can find the IP Mask Rainer, which is really good. Um, you can like maybe even catch your opponent off guard, or it can really it it, it can set up a um a Nightmare Unicorn during your opponent's turn because Nightmare Unicorn can activate its effect during either player's turn. So. Um, being able to like disrupt your opponent as a quick effect and spin it back into the deck can be really good. Um, and then Time Thief we do also the Time Thieves are in here and the Sign Frames. Um, these are two noble cards. Omega is notable in more than just Side Frame decks. And I think the Time Thief we do is playing in more than just Time Thief decks as well. Also, decks that um, play rank that that can go into rank fours would like to have him. And then Cyphrim Gear Gamma is a really good hand trap. Um, Type Thief Winder, and then also the S Forces are found here, and a few other Cyber stuff. So yeah, it seems like a good um, pack if you're looking for any of those archetypes or the um, ones that are usable when, like this is really good if you can go into level 8 synchro plays, um, and this card's really good for rank 4 decks. And then of course Gamma is really good, and maybe um, some of the other side frame are good um, for like tact is like hand traps for more than just side frames but I think but gamma is the most noble one since it um since negating monster effects is really good anyway so that was the last one so I'll go ahead and um get to the loner deck I'm gonna have to go fast through this um but I don't want to give it up just because just because I went through a few of those secret packs on oh, my bad here it is of course if you make a mistake there's a little bit of loading which doesn't help okay so the next loner will be stargazing fairies so it's a fit it's looks like it's in around the agents that's kinda cool so the deck description is make use of fairy type monsters effects such as those of the ancient monsters to special summon high level fairy type monsters such as majesty hyperion since you need to pay life points to activate some effects we recommend maintaining your life points throughout the duel that shouldn't be too hard though um mystical shine ball of course that one's really easy it's only in here because venus which Venus isn't as great in this kind of festival um, because because you only get to play with one shine ball of course she's a lot better when you can play with three because um, it's kinda hard it's gonna be kinda hard to use her effect more than once here because um, if the shine ball is in the graveyard she can't specimen from the graveyard only from the hand of deck Anyway, there's also Cupid Volley, which is basically the fairy form of um, that other card that sends one to three cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. I forget what it's called. It's a machine guy. A machine guy that also does it. There's also Neptune. This is the one. And I kind of went through, I think, a lot of these. So, um... So that's actually pretty nice. I remember going through a lot of these when I was looking at that one selection pack, I believe. Um, yeah, I think it was a selection pack. Yeah, hold on, I'll make sure. Yeah, so if you're wondering where you can get, 
if if you really like the loner deck it's actually not that hard to build yourself um of course make it your own because um all because a lot of the asian cards are found in the valiant wings loner deck um not um selection pack i mean see that's really nice so that's a plus so it shouldn't be that bad um but i'll go through them again real quick for those of you who didn't see that part of the of the video and I'm going to the wrong place i still gotta hurry though i really want to get this all done in one video I probably won't have time for any pack openings though, unfortunately. Um, so Agent of Life Neptune. This is the agent that special summons an agent from the hand or the graveyard. So that seems pretty good. Or, or if um, the Sanctuary of Life in the sky is either on the field or, or in the graveyard you get to special summon a Hyperion and that can be more than just mass Hyperion too so that's pretty cool um and because neither player can tribute a monster summon with this effect until the end of your opponent's turn beca because of that um it also can't be kaiju so that's pretty cool only for a limited time but still the fact that it can't be kaiju is it's actually not bad. Um, it can still be Nibiru though, but I don't know if this deck really specializes in special summoning a whole bunch, so you might not have to worry about that. And then Agent of Mystery Earth is of course a really good card. It's a searcher for the deck, and searchers become a lot better in a Highlander format. Um, so yeah, this is really good. Because it can search for either an agent monster or mass Hyperion, depending on it whether you meet the conditions or not for that mass Hyperion. But even if you do, you can still search for an agent if you really wanted to. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then Cupid Serve. Um, this one allows you to banish cards from your graveyard, which I don't think is as good, but. I mean, maybe if you have any cards, I'd like to be banished, but I don't think so. And then Diviner have the of the Herald. Um, this one allows you to um, um, either mill a fairy from your deck or send one from your extra to the graveyard. And then, and then when it's tribute, you get to special summon a level two or lower fairy from your hand to deck. So that allows you to special summon a Neptune or an Earth, which is a really... Unfortunately, Earth only gets its effect when it's normal summon, though, so that's kind of unfortunate. We can still do, like, a Cupid Volley to mill some some more cards or Neptune, but I don't think Neptune is probably... So probably the best special summon would be Cupid Volley. Of course, there might be some notable um, extra that cause to send to the graveyard. Um, and then, of course, Venus special summon, can special summon the Mystical Shine Ball, which can be used as fodder for mass for the Hyperions. And then um, Mars simply just gains attack and defense. So not as noble as the other agents, but still. And then, of course, it's got the ghost ogre again looks like this one only has one hand trap it would be kind of cool if they put in effect failure that would also kind of fit the thing too since um effect failure is also a fairy anyway they ha do have the eccentric though which is not too bad um since it's versatile it's a little bit better it, m it might be better than Mystical Space if in some ways because of its versatility. And then Honest um, for helping to give your monsters extra attack for beating over stuff. So that can be pretty cool. 
and then Jupiter um, Jupiter also gives um, can give one of your fairies a little bit extra attack too and then also um, you can use the um, monster that you banish to special summon it by discarding a fairy and since each of them can be used on the same turn like that can set that can set for, that's a pretty good com that has pretty good synergy and then cupid dunk um simply just increases its level so not that notable but i guess it can't the 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 um level manipulation can be used for some exceeds or synchro plays and or synchro plays um and then Vic victor rica um can help you special summon some of your other f some of your higher level fairies so that's pretty cool um and then it also um can um search for other fairies when it's destroyed uh yeah and then Uranus um, is basically a free special summon as long as you have Sanctuary on the sky, in the sky. So that's pretty cool. And also um, mills some of your agents too. Um, yeah. And then Cupid 4 um, is another one that can special summon itself. And then manipulate another level manipulator as well. Also, I guess it's knowable that a few of these cupids are. I don't th actually none of the cupid cards are tuners. Um, but also I guess the diviner is also kind of notable for being able to manipulate its level as well, since it's also a tuner. So it can set up for some pretty nice synchro plays. And then Pancratops, just a really good card for being able to destroy stuff. I kind of went over that in the last deck too. Lona deck as well. Um, and then Protecting Spear, Logeth. And if you want to take a closer look at these cards, you can always feel free to pause the video. Um, I actually don't need to like um keep like going backing out because I can just scroll. I forgot. Anyway, um, protecting spirit Logeth. Um, helps you. Of course, it's in the name and helps to protect some of the other monsters when it's destroyed. Um, and then also it can she can special summon herself too so that's not too bad and huh and then also she can ban stuff from ban some of your opponent's monsters so that's pretty cool and the massive pain can also um help with destroying stuff on the field and he can do any cards so that's really good and he can be activated twice per turn while the Sanctuary in the Sky is on the field. But even if it's not, he can still activate his effect just once, though. And it's a he has a pretty easy special summoning method, too. Majesty Hyperion. And also, that's where like the the one that mills agents comes into, into play. Um... And the Majesty Hyperion is kind of like just a different form of Hyperion. Um, instead of destroying cards on the field, though, it banishes cards in, in the graveyards. Which is mostly just going to be opponent's graveyard, I would imagine. And then Dark Hole, of course. Um, these are pretty generic, just destructions destructions and then this really is really good um to help either extend your plays or be able to disrupt your opponent a little bit. Pop's eyes a a good draw draw spell. 
lightning storm um <clears throat> really good for disrupting your opponent getting rid of some of the pieces that are gonna um that can disrupt your plays or if they're control deck maybe getting rid of the whole back or at least forcing the activation of a uh, solemn judgment which i mean since solemn judgment is only at one um that's not too bad most of the time you should be able to destroy the whole back row with that card um the course in the sky um just really good for helping get um recur fairies back into your hand and then this one basically can either um activate uh, activate the sanctuary in the sky or add or or add a monster that mentions that card so um it's basically whichever one you need so that's pretty cool and sanctuary in the sky has a pretty basic effect that can be pretty good, um, but like it's mostly there to help facilitate your know, like monsters that need it on the field or spells that need it on the field. And then also this acts as another sanctuary in the sky too, so that's pretty cool. So so you basically have three sanctuary in the skies because of that other card that can activate straight from the deck. And then scapegoat, um, Special summons tokens, which can be used for link plays. Um, call by the grave. But of course, you can't actually summon other monsters or turn you activate this card. So it's better to use it during the opponent's turn. Call by the grave can help disrupt your opponent's plays or, or negate their hand traps. Heavy storm duster is a really good um, spell and trap card destroyer. I didn't even think about that though. Infinite impermanence, um, um, just a really good um, hand trap, um, base trap that can also gain benefits if it's set. So it's good for going first and second. And just saying, cards that negate effects is really good. And then Ice Dragon's Prison, another really generic trap card. That can either help get you a little bit advantage um, by having an, an extra monster on your field, or um, where it's mostly used for helping to disrupt your opponent by being able to remove basically two of their threats, basically one from their graveyard and one from their field. And then stained glass of light and dark um, can help get you um more cards it's it's a uh, card draw basically um and then divine punishment a really good um <clears throat> really good for be for acting as a it's it's a bit of a better solemn judgment when in a sanction and sky deck it's a little bit hard to activate though um and then rebirth of Pat Parshath. I don't think you have a ton of. Um, yeah, you only have one of the counter traps, so this one can be really tough to activate, since you need to actually reveal a counter trap, and the only other counter trap you have is Divine Punishment. Hmm. Anyway, if you can, if if you can activate it, though, like it it gets you also gets you pr some pretty good advantage though too. So, not bad, but it can be pretty hard to activate since you do want to remember that um, divine punishment is the only other counter trap in this deck. If you do decide to play this loner deck in the festival, um, if you have this and this, you want to um set this. And then hold on to the Divine Punishment so you can actually use the Rebirth of Parshaf. And then Crackdown. It steals your opponent's monsters. Kind of like a trap based form of mind control. Which is another really good steal opponent's monsters card. And that can be used for um, Link plays. Or maybe even like Synchro plays too. Or even like Exceed plays. Whichever 
wanting one to use it for. This is another way you can get Sanctuary in the Sky. So this basically makes it so that you have basically four Sanctuary in the Skies in your deck. And then if you don't need to get Sanctuary in the Sky, it also searches for a spell or trap that mentions it. It can get you like um, Divine Punishment or Sanctum and Parshath, etc. So yeah. And then the extra deck. I think I should be able to get through this. Um, Elder Entity Natis. Um, you're probably not going to be fusion summoning for this. Um, it's mostly just going to be used as like a target for Divine of the Herald. Which, I'm glad they gave you pretty good targets for Divine of the Herald. This one, um, can be sent via Divine of the Herald in order to destroy a car on the field. So that's pretty cool. It does target though, so that can makes it a little bit worse, but it's still really good though. And then Cupid Pitch is a Cupid Synchro Monster. Um, it's another level manipulator, so it can be used for um further plays. It's also a tuner though, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then also when it if it's sent to the graveyard synchro material, um, you inflict damage. It it also can burn your opponent for a little bit, and searches for level eight or level monster with 600 defense, which is it has to be specifically level eight. Level eight or lower. Um. Oh, so I guess there's a f yeah, there's a few targets here. You can you can actually search for us, uh, so that's a little unfortunate. I guess it's most of the Cupid monsters though. Oh, but you can at least search for Divine of the World with that effect, or like some of the agents. It's not the Earth, which is probably the best one you would want to search for, but you can at least search for um, Neptune with it anyway there's a few good targets with that and then the next one is executed of the underworld pluto so it's uh... basically an uh... synchro agent so that's pretty good it can give you more fodder for mass appearing when it's destroyed um, and then also um... unfortunately it the the fact that the fact that it has to switch uh, to Book of Moon a monster is not a quick effect, but it's still still not too bad. It can help disrupt your opponent if they have a really good monster on, on a face up on their field. It can uh, turn into a face down defense, so maybe it can at least like bait out and negate from them. Oh wait, it is a quick effect. Just just as long as Sanctuary and Sky is on, either on the field or in the graveyard. So yeah, okay, okay, that's a lot better. So it's basically a... It's basically a fairy tale Snow at that point. But like, without like the whole like special summoning thing. Um... But I mean the Book of Moon effect of fairy tale Snow. Um, and then you can banish this card from your graveyard. Okay, it's another searcher for Sanctuary in the Sky, so that makes, um, that gets it up to five searchers for that card. But it's a little bit more specific since it can only add Sanctuary in the Sky, not any card that mentions it. It's still not too bad. You do technically have two cards that act as Sanctuary in the Sky. Oh wait, no, Sanctum and Parshath only acts as it while well, it's on the field in the graveyard, so it can only search for the original. Still not too bad if you're still missing Sanctum in the Sky, especially since it's something you can just go into, hopefully. And then Ancient Sacred Wyvern um, is ba basically an attack manipulator. Um based on the difference between life points of you and your opponent so it can be pretty good also it can 
special summon itself out and it's, and that effect is not once per turn so if if it keeps getting destroyed by battle you can just keep special summoning it out so that's pretty cool and then um this one can help um can can change the battle positions of your opponent's monsters like if you have a really high attack but low defense monster on your opponent's side of the field you can help it can help better take care of that problem and also the piercing battle damage is pretty cool too um, maybe to finish up games if you bring like something with zero defense um, to into the fence position and then angel of zero um, um, gains a little bit of attack based off of your opponent's banished cards and a few of the other cards do help facilitate that effect and then also um, the the during the standby phase of the next being able to special summon it when it's banished is also kind of noble since you do have a card in your deck that do, does banish cards it's one of the cupid monsters so yeah that's kind of cool but of course it has to be special summoned properly first so you can't just send to the graveyard with divine and then expect to be able to get that effect and then massive flare hyperion is is the hyperion X deck monster um this allows you to um s send send one of your specific monsters to, to the graveyard um in order to allow it to gain that cause effects and huh that's not too bad and that monster become um yeah so it can basically act as another copy of any of those cards which is really good in a highlander format and then also it has like a quick effect um it has a quick effect banish as long as the opponent activates a card effect which is pretty easy to get because the opponent's probably going to be activating cards during their turn and then Herald of Pure Light calls for two level twos, which can be a bit hard to get, but I mean, it does allow you to recur some of your monsters, so that's pretty cool. You do have to shuffle a card from your hand to a deck with, after using it, but maybe you can like, um, sh if you if you do have a searcher for that card again, you can just choose one of those cards. So yeah. And then Met Quipped Engineer. Um, it's a rank three. Um, oh, okay. So, okay. And then I'm not sure exactly about that, but I gotta get going. So, Fairy Cheer Go basically acts as card draw. Ragnar Zero. Um, can destroy um it's pretty good destruction but it's kind of it's kind of specific but if your opponent is using um, monsters that um change their attacks and can be pretty good uh, to counter that and then hit potion ingan um boost can boost the entire field while like um lowering the attack of dark monsters if you're playing against a dark deck and then protected the agent's moon um helps you send um some specific cards to your graveyard so that's not too bad celestial night lord Pashath um is good for it's another basically searcher for sanctuary in the sky or um one of those other sanctuary in the sky s cards and then a uh, tri brigade Shirag again I'm not exactly sure why, but okay. I guess like um with it like it gets it's for the if this card is sent to a graveyard effect, you get to search one of your um one of your beast beast warrior wing beast monsters from your deck to your hand. I'm not sure how many targets you have for that, but um cool. Um Anyway, so there's the deck. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. 
and considering the notification bell if you if you enjoy this content and I'll see you in the next part bye everyone